Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to my Beginning C Sharp with Unity video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be covering object-oriented programming, and we're going to do that by introducing you to your first object, and that is a struct. Now, there is actually another object that you can use, an object type, and that is a class. And typically, a lot of ways that these tutorials go is that they'll introduce you to the class and maybe they'll be give, maybe they'll give you a passing reference to the struct. In this case we're going to do it reverse. We're going to start off by covering the struct and covering all various aspects of object oriented programming using structs. Then in the next section we'll introduce you to classes and you'll see exactly the differences between a struct and a class and why you would want to use one in one situation and another in another situation. So here we go, we're diving into the struct. The big question, why use a struct? This opens up an even bigger question is, what is object-oriented programming? So far, we've been doing all of our programs in this long continuous list. We've been doing it in on disable. When we disable an object in the hierarchy, then our program runs. And as you've seen, that program can get a little large, clunky, and unwieldy. Now in the last section, we dived into loops and various aspects of control flow. And from going through that section, you should have some knowledge to make your code not as clunky as before, but yet everything is still done in one place. With object-oriented programming, we're taking your code and we're encapsulating it in this object. This object, in a sense, is a master of its own domain. It has its own fields or properties. It has its own methods that it uses to operate on those properties. Basically, when you're using an object, the object knows exactly what to do. You don't necessarily need to know what's going on inside the object. You just need to access it and call its features. The way you can think of object-oriented programming is that objects are almost like black boxes. And we use this term a lot in programming. In essence, you don't necessarily need to know how the object works. You just interact with it. For instance, let's say you pick up a gun in a first-person shooter. You don't necessarily need to know what's going on in that gun. You just need to pull the trigger, and the gun does exactly what you expect it to do. When working with an object, you expect the same thing. You don't necessarily need to know what's going on underneath the covers. You just need to know what it is, what it does, and how you can use it. So let's, get a little, let's dig a little deeper into objects. Objects in the core are a grouping of related data in operations that act on those data. In this episode, we're gonna be covering the data itself. Let's think of an example where we can use an object. Let's imagine you're working on a role-playing game, and what you want to do is create various different types of player, player characters. For instance, you may have a wizard, you may have a fighter, you may have a thief. Now, a lot of these character types have qualities in common. They can have strength, they can have agility, they can have charisma. So for our role-playing game, we're going to create a object called character. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a type of struct. The way we define a struct in our code is to give it start off with the keyword struct. Now you can, before that, you can add an access modifier such as public and private, and we'll be covering those in the next video in this series. But for now, just put down struct and then you're gonna put the name of the struct. And the name of the struct is going to be capitalized. So in this case, we're gonna have struct character. Then we're gonna have an open brace and a closed brace. Now we have the skeleton of our struct. The struct doesn't do anything right now, but everything that we wanna define within the struct goes within those braces. For our character, we want to have three different fields. We wanna have one for its strength, one for its agility, and another for its charisma. And you do this the same way we've been doing it all along. You go inside the first brace and you define your variable. So you would put public int strength. Again, we'll cover access modifiers in the next video. For now, just keep things for public. And in another video, I'll tell you why that's actually a bad idea. So we're gonna do public int strength and then a semicolon at the end. Then we're gonna do public int agility, another semicolon, and public int charisma. And we're gonna keep this character really simple. That's all that it's going to have. At this point now, we have our character already defined, but now we want to use our character within the code. 
the way we do this is first we have to create a new character. So somewhere in the code that you want to have this new character, and let's say we want to create a fighter, we would first create the variable that it's going to reference. So we're going to put the, the type of the variable followed by the variable name. In our case, we're going to do character, then fighter, and equals new character, just like that. And we're going to have two parentheses after the character. And you're going to see, and you, later you're going to see what those parentheses actually mean. Okay, and then you're gonna have a semicolon. Then you're gonna have a semicolon after that. Congratulations, you're seeing you now your first new object, and this is, as I mentioned, a type of struct. Now, if we want to assign some strength to this fighter, we can do fighter dot strength, and let's say he's really strong, we'll give him 18 strength. So we have fighter dot strength equals 18. Now let's set agility. Fighter dot agility equals 10. And let's say he's really not that charismatic. We'll say fighter.charisma equals 2. You'll, you'll notice also that all the public variables are capitalized. And again, this is per C-sharp conventions. At this point, I can now pass my fighter around. And it's going to remember its strength and its agility and its charisma. And as you can see, it's really easy to access that data. If whenever I want to check what its fighter strength is, I just do fighter.strength. And then I can do... A conditional check on it or I can do it throw that into a switch statement or whatever you need to do but the fact is now you know exactly what that field represents and you're not having to look into arrays to get it or it's not held in individual variables that aren't related to each other it's all grouped under this idea of a struct now that you have a an understanding of how structs work in theory. Let's see how it works inside of Unity. So far we've been doing everything within our Hello World script. And this script, you it's been useful so that you can see exactly how code can function very easily. But now it's time to break off from the Hello World script and start breaking into other scripts. And you're going to see exactly how you can have scripts ref reference other scripts as well. In this case, I'm going to create a new object for a player. Oftentimes when making games, we have the idea of the player playing it. In this case, we want the, the person's name. We want to know how, what their score is and exactly how many lives they have less, left. So keeping all that information grouped within an object is a good idea. What I'm going to do is in my scripts folder, I'm going to hit click create and then I'm going to click C sharp script. I'm going to give this the name player like so. I'm going to double click to open. And you can see here we have the boilerplate that comes with every script. In time, you're going to learn what all this stuff does. And you're going to learn what it does sooner than later. So just hang on and be patient. What we're going to do for now, though, is we're going to select it all. And we're going to delete it. Now I'm going to create my new player object. And I'm going to declare it as a public object. And it's going to be a type of struct. And I'm going to call it player, like so. And that's it. I have my struct and actually I could create an instance of the struct but there's no fields in it. It's not going to be able to contain any data so it's not going to be very useful. Okay so what kind of data do I want this to hold? Well as I mentioned I want the name so let's make the public name let's make this public name be a type of string like so. The next one is going to be a score and the final one is going to be the lives. Just like that. I've made my struct. Awesome. Let's instance this in our Hello World script. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to delete all this stuff here. And like always, we're going to do this within on disable. But I'm also going to introduce to you a new event. Like we have the event on disable, we have another event called start. And this is when the script starts up. We can initialize some variables. And the first variable we're going to create is a type of player. And I'm going to define this right above my start. And it's going to be a type of player like this. And as you can see, this script has access to my struct. So we'll just call this player1, like so. Now inside my start event, I'm going to create a new player, like so. I'm going to reference player1 equals new player. 
and we're using the new keyword, and you'll be using it a lot when working with objects. Now, at this point, we can give names to our player. So we're going to set the name. Let's say his name is Barney. And we're going to give him a score. We'll say he has a score of 100, and he still has three lives left. Just like that. And now we have our player. And in our on disable, we can simply just reference this as well. We can say name, and we'll just print out all the fields. So here we have name, score, and lives. Okay, let's go back to Unity, and we're going to run this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select our cube in the hierarchy. And we're going to uncheck the cube and keep it, keep your eyes on the console. And you can see name, Barney, score 100, lives 3. Now, all this stuff, what we've just covered, isn't new. You know about variables and the types that those variables contain. And you know how to assign values to them. The only difference is now that you're grouping all this data into one object. And that object is a type of struct. Okay, so your first task in object-oriented programming is I want you to create a new type of struct. And this struct we'll be using in the next series of challenges. The struct I want you to create is an alien struct. And this is going to be a prototype. Maybe we can put to maybe we can use this in a game later on in this series. But the way this is going to work, I want you to create an alien struct and I want it to have a point value so that when the player shoots it, I want it to have a point value. And that's going to be a type of int. I also want you to give them some hit points, and this is going to be a type of int. Some can have just one hit point, meaning one bullet will blow them up, whereas others will take multiple shots to have them explode. And that hit points is going to be a type of int. And then finally, I want you to create a variable to track its state, whether it's alive or dead. And this is going to be a Boolean value. I want you to do this based on what you learned in this episode. And then in the on disable, I want you to create a new instance of the alien and print out its values very much like how you saw me do here. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a message in the comments. If you've enjoyed this, feel free to give me a thumbs up. And in the next video, we'll be covering access control and namespaces. In the next video, we're going to be covering access control and namespaces, and that's critical for you to understand before we move any further when working with objects. All right, everyone, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. See you then.